Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. So today we're going to be looking at some revision of rational exponents, right? But before we do that, we need to actually look at exactly what are we talking about when we talk about the concept of an exponent, right? Because that's where all of this starts from. And that's gonna go to the laws of exponents, the definitions and the equations, and then we'll look at exactly how do we then, one, simplify them, two, how do we solve them as well? Because remember, simplifying and solving are two different things. But for now, let's just jump right into it and see exactly what we have to do today. So, um, the first question that I wanna ask you is, why do we write numbers and algebraic expressions as exponents, right? Exactly what are we trying to achieve when we take numbers and algebraic expressions and write them as exponents? But before that, we need to answer the question, what is an exponent? Our concept map is we're going to look at laws of exponents. We're going to look at some integers because exponents have to do with some integers. We're going to look at the definitions that are inside the exponents, equations, some sets, and rational numbers. So the key words for this lesson will be exponent and set. Now firstly, an exponent refers to the number of times a number, and this number, we call it a base, is multiplied by itself. So this is written in the form of a to the exponent of n, and this is an example of a general form of what an exponent is about, where the a is the base of the exponent, and the n will be the exponent itself. So for example, Let's say I have two to the exponent of three. The two will then be my base, and the three will be how many times I'm going to multiply the base by itself. So since it's three, it means I'm going to multiply it by itself three times. So that will be two multiplied by two, multiplied by two, so that's one, two, three times. It is multiplied by itself. Please don't think that I'm saying it's two multiplied by three. No, it's two multiplied by itself three times. That's what an exponent is about because we just said now the definition is how many times the base is multiplied by itself. So we have what we call the laws of exponents. With the laws of exponents is, we normally use letters, uh, variables that is, to show the laws of exponents. A to the exponent of m multiplied by a to the exponent of n will be the same as a to the exponent of m plus n. What does this mean? When we're multiplying powers of the same base, right? So when I say power of the same base, I'm talking about the whole exponent, the, the base and the exponent, we consider it as a power, right? Or an index. And then when we're multiplying them and the bases are the same, the rule is we add the exponents. Obviously, the opposite of multiply will be divide, and the opposite of addition will be subtraction. So meaning, when we are then dividing powers of the same base, what we then do is subtract the exponents. We also have another law that says if an exponent is raised to another exponent, the operation between them will be a multiplication. So let's just quickly look at a few examples that have to do with this. So if I say to you I have two to the exponent of three multiplied by two to the exponent of two, this will be the same as two to the exponent of three plus two, which will then give me two to the exponent of five, and according to the calculator, this will definitely be 32. Now, the opposite of this is the division one, right? So if I'm dividing two to the exponent of three by two to the exponent of two, here I will then need to subtract. So it becomes three minus two, which is just equals to two to the exponent of one. But mathematically, we know that we hardly write one. Uh, if there's an absence of an exponent, it does not mean zero. It means there's a one there that we are not writing. And then the last one will be, if I have two to the exponent of three, all of it raised to two, this will be the same as two to the exponent of six. I'm going to multiply the two exponents. So what you need to understand here, guys, is 
the bases need to be the same for you to apply the, uh, the laws, right? That's the condition. The laws are there, but for them to be active and for you to use them properly, the bases need to be the same. Whether it's multiplication or division, the bases definitely need to be the same. But let's look at some more laws that have to do with exponents. Also, if I have two terms that are a product inside the bracket raised to an, an, another exponent, we use the property of numbers, the one that talks about distributing, where we're going to distribute this to all the exponents that are there. So that means, remember, I said the absence of an exponent means that it's one, not necessarily zero. So this is the same as a to the exponent of one times m, b to the exponent of one multiplied by m, and therefore it then becomes a to the exponent of m multiplied by b to the exponent of m. The other one is if it's a division inside the bracket, we also apply the same rule, that I'm going to distribute this to the exponent of the numerator and the exponent of the denominator there, which will then give me a to the exponent of m divided by b to the exponent of m. Now, we also have some definitions. The first definition is a raised to an exponent of zero is the same as one. Now, with the zero specifically, I will write the zero for you to see that there is a zero there. So it does not matter what you have. If I open a bracket and I write a whole lot of numbers and variables inside there, close it and raise it to zero, everything that is there is just going to become one. If I have a million raised to zero, it will become one. A thousand raised to zero, it will become one. So it does not matter what the number is. As long as it is raised to an exponent of zero, it will forever be one. That's one of the definitions that we have. The second definition is a to the exponent of negative n. Remember, when you're solving exponents, there is this note that we normally make leave your answers with positive exponents. To do, to do that, you're always going to take one divided by whatever the term is that you were having. So here it will be one over a to the exponent of n. Let's make a typical example. Three raised to an exponent of two. If you press your calculator on this, it will give you one over nine. But let me show you how that comes about. So it's one over three squared, and then three squared we know is nine, therefore it's one over nine, which is the answer that you will then get should you press your calculator with three raised to an exponent of negative two. We also have rational exponents. Remember from the concept of rational numbers, a rational number is a number that can be written in the form of a over b, right? It can be written as a fraction. So meaning, when we say we have rational exponents, we're talking about the exponents that are in the form of a fraction, which is the m over n. And it also has a few laws that we need to look at. a to the exponent of m over n will be the same as the nth root of a to the exponent of m, right? And then the last one will be uh, the nth root of a will be the same as a to the exponent of 1 over n. But we're going to look at some questions to try and see exactly what is it that we are talking about here. So the first question that I have here is simplify the following. Please understand something. Because I know you guys are very creative. Miraculously, you will then have an equal sign there, and then you have a zero on the right-hand side of the equal sign. That's not what you need to do, because it says simplify, and it is an expression. Your equal sign will always be on the left, and then you simplify the expression. When I say simplify, I'm saying to you, make sure that there is no common factor there. Make sure that you use your highest common factor, which is HCF. If I have 27 and nine, Nine is divisible in both numbers, so that's what I mean. Make sure that the exponents are in the simplest form that they can ever be in. Lastly, make sure that your exponents are positive numbers at the end.
Those are the conditions of you simplifying. But let's look at exactly what do I mean. So the first one is 81x to the exponent of negative 3, y to the exponent of 4, divided by 16x, y to the exponent of negative 4, right? And then all of this is raised to negative 3 over 4. Remember, we always look at board mass, and board mass says to us, look at what is inside the bracket before you can go outside the bracket. So that will therefore mean this is going to be the same as 3, right? Because remember, uh, 81 is the same as 9 squared, so this will be the same as 3 to the exponent of 4. That's the very first thing that I'm going to do. And then I will have my x there, minus 3. Remember the rule. If I am dividing and my bases are the same, I must subtract the exponents. So it will be minus 1. And then I will have y. There's a 4 there. It becomes 4 minus. The y at the bottom has a negative 4. And all of this is divided by 2 to the exponent of 4. And then I will then close the brackets because there is something out here which is negative 3 over 4. From there, what do you do? You simplify what we have inside here. So it therefore becomes 3 to the exponent of 4, x to the exponent of negative 4, y to the exponent of 8, and all of this is divided by 2 to the exponent of 4. And then all of this is raised to negative 3 over 4. Remember, the law says here, you distribute the negative 3 over 4 to everything that is inside the bracket. So I will distribute this. Let me quickly use a different color. I will distribute this to that 4, to that negative 4, to the 8, and to that 4 there. So it will therefore become, the, which will then be the final answer, 3 to the exponent of negative 3, because 4 multiplied by negative 3 over 4 is just negative 3, multiplied by x to the exponent of positive 3, multiplied by y to the exponent of, this will be 8 times negative 3 over 4, so that's once, that's twice, which will give me negative 6. And all of this is divided by 2 to the exponent of negative 3. But remember the rule. Leave your answers in positive exponents. So I'm just going to erase up here so that I have enough space. This will therefore be, I'm just going to write it up here. I hope you guys are following. This is then going to be uh, 2 to the exponent of 3 because I'm if it's a denominator and I make it a numerator, it therefore becomes a positive exponent. My x will remain with the 3 there, and then my y must be a denominator because it has a negative exponent, 3 to the, to the 3, and then y to the 6. And then you can simplify that. 2 to the exponent of 3 is 8. 3 to the exponent of 3 is 27. So it can just be 8 over 27 and with those variables there. Remember, the law that I just applied here was we distributed the exponent outside there to the exponent in inside. We also changed this and wrote it as prime numbers, right? The goal, by the way, is to always write your basis to be prime numbers. All right, so let's look at this other example here. So what we need here is our bases need to be the same. Remember, that was my condition when I spoke about the laws of exponents, right? And the, those bases that we are using will be prime numbers at all times. So that's the goal. So let's look at this. This will be 2 to the exponent of x multiplied by 2 to the exponent of 2 multiplied by 3 because 2 to the exponent of 2 is 4 times 3. It gives me that 12 but I must raise all of this to x minus 1, multiplied by 3 to the exponent of 2x, and all of this is divided by 2 multiplied by 3 to the exponent of 3x minus 1. 
right? And then remember we distribute the exponent outside to the exponent inside to remove the brackets. So this will then be two to the exponent of x times two to the exponent of two x minus two times three to the exponent of x minus one times three to the exponent of two x. And then all of this is divided by two to the exponent of three x minus one times three to the exponent of three x minus one. Then from here, guys, this is where you then look at your laws of exponents, right? We said when we are dividing and the bases are the same, we subtract the exponents. When we are multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the exponents. So you will start with the multiplication one at the top, the multiplication one at the bottom, and then go into the division because it will be a numerator and a denominator from there. So let's look at it. So the first one here is two to the x and two to the exponent of two x minus two. The x plus two x will be three x. I'm then gonna subtract the three x at the bottom there, which will give me zero. The minus two minus minus one will be minus two plus one, right? So it means now I'm left with two to the exponent of minus one. And then the three, it will be the x plus the two x, it gives me three x. And then that 3x, I subtracted the 3x at the bottom there, it's 0. Minus 1 minus minus 1 will then give me 3 to the exponent of 0. Then lastly, my answer will just be 1 over 2 multiplied by 1. Let me just include it so you can see where did this 3 to the exponent of 0 went. Now I have the last example here. As we are going to the short break, I want you guys to look at it. Please try it out and try and apply the laws that we've done so far. I hope you've been following me. So this is just the test I'm giving you. But as soon as we are back, I will quickly look at it first just to show you what you're supposed to have done and then we'll move on to another thing that we need to do. But for now, stay tuned. I'll be back. Mm -hmm.